Welcome to a new episode on the Technomora channel. We really hope you will enjoy watching it and invite you to tell us what you think of it by leaving your reactions below the video. And now, please allow me to present your host, Technomora. All right, so using the mono switch on the amplifier, I determined that the problem is definitely not in the end stage of the amplifier, which is good. So we also determined that the left channel was kind of thinny sounding and uh, there was also quite a bit of buzzing going on. Now if you look on the schematic, okay, uh, you can tell that the tape and phono input, which are here, so tape, phono, go, in fact, into these three stages here. And I say three because there are three. So it goes into uh, an amplification stage, you see here. Then in a second, amplification stage which is immediately followed by a whole lot of filtering for uh, treble and bass okay and then this filtered signal goes on to a uh, you could say a final amplification output stage which is uh, this transistor here 2TR18 and from there on, the sound goes to uh, the volume uh, slider uh, potentiometer and from there to the balance slider potentiometer. Okay, now having tested the mono uh, setting um, or switch rather, we do know that the sound arrives all the way to uh, the volume and the balance potentiometers. So we might consider that this transistor, the 2R, the 2TR18, is probably good. So, and we're looking at, at the left channel. Okay, so then the next question is, all right, now that we determine the end stage transistor uh, uh, is probably running fine, um, which of these two is causing us trouble? All right, now those three transistors I'm showing you, <clears throat> are located right here. Let me see if I can show you. So, right there, where I'm shining the laser, okay, that's 2TR16, okay, this transistor here. And this transistor is a BC148. I don't know if you can see it, but there. This little dome transistor here is 2TR17. Okay? And then we move on to 2TR18. So 2TR18 is down there. Okay? So uh, it's this one here where I'm shining my laser. Okay, so this is 2TR18. Alright, so one of those three transistors is causing us trouble. And I'm suspecting it's either 2TR16, which is down there, or 2TR17, which is down there. Yeah, so what I'm going to do 
if you look at the schematic so if you look at the schematic what I am going to do is inject a signal to the base of 2TR18 then a signal to the base of 2TR17 <coughs> and then a signal to the base of 2TR18 now if I inject a signal here and it comes out loud and clear from the left output channel of the amplifier then obviously there's no problem downstream if however there is no adequate amplification then I must inject the sound here and see whether uh, the output stage the left output stage is still outputting sound okay adequate sound if it isn't then there is a problem possibly with this stage so if we move on and I inject a signal here and the left output channel of the amplifier is still quiet then uh, in all likelihood there is a problem with this transistor okay it would seem the phono and tape switches needed yet more cleaning yeah. so there was a, a mechanical say or contact problem so I cleaned them and I switched them on and off and on and off a couple of times well maybe 20 times and that seems to have fixed at least the weak left channel of photo and tape and uh, I'm running a, a royalty free, free song now through my speakers this is the right speaker this is the left speaker So, yeah, uh, I'm running currently on the phono input, but take my word for it, um, it works on the tape input as well. I think I may have found the culprit that is causing the trouble in the left channel uh, of the amplifier. And in fact, it's that little dome transistor you see here okay so I've got the left channel on low volume uh, in the background maybe you can hear faint music yeah now watch what happens when I spray the transistor with some cold spray There you go. So the music starts to play louder all of a sudden. Yeah. While that little dome transistor is cold. Once the cold is gone, of course, the sound will just drop off again. there you go the sound is gone so I think that the culprit of our problem is that little dome transistor there all right I extracted the little dome transistor and it appears to be a B 
BC 154. Okay. It has an alternative designation SGS 8720, I would think, or 208. In any case, uh, the more known designation is BC 154. I looked up uh, possible alternatives to that little dome transistor and uh, I came up with this one. Oh, come on, focus. Which is a BC 557. Okay. So it's not identical, but I think this transistor might do. Uh, now I looked up the specifications uh, and they look pretty similar to the BC 154. I looked up the specifications of the BC 154 which is also a PNP transistor and they are similar to the BC557. So yeah, I think I'm going to uh, replace that little dome transistor by a BC557. So um, let's get on with it. Alright, I replaced the little transistor. Now let's listen to the left channel of the amplifier. Oh yeah, it works perfectly. And the same volume as the right channel. So, perfect. So, there you go. The culprit for our problem was this little BC154 PNP dome transistor. Well, what do you know? So, you see, even a little grain of sand can throw a mighty machine off. I reflowed around all the switches, their pins, the solder points. Okay, and you can see all the switch banks here in nice, neat rows or columns, I should say. So, uh, the reason why I did that is because over the years there's a lot of mechanical stress put on those solder points you see right here. Okay, And it's not uh, uncommon that these solder points uh, fail. Uh, bad contacts or broken traces, stuff like that. So, rather than be lazy and, and having to trace problems at a later stage, uh, since I have the, the tuner's insights uh, uh, out in the open, I thought, well, I would take the, the effort of reflowing all the solder contacts of the switches. And I think um, that will pay off in the future. Alright, the electronic part of the Biomaster 901 is, as far as I can tell, finished. Uh, I managed to repair the last fault, which was um, a faulty uh, left channel preamp, which uh, I did by replacing one of the little dome transistors which was over there by a BC uh, 557 which is you could say a general purpose uh, transistor um, but if you look at it I, I think you can just about see another of those little dome transistors right here okay and um, a 
apparently these are prone to uh, breakdown. Yeah, they break down quickly. Um, I replaced a few resistors. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors. I also replaced one pot, which this one here. And uh, oh yeah, and I did replace one of the uh, indicator lights or light bulbs, I should say. So yes, I did all of that. So um, I aligned the AM circuitry. Uh, I also set the rest current for the output stages. So that is done as well. Um, also, I reflowed the contacts uh, of all the switches. All right. So I reflowed all of the contacts. Now, the only thing that is left for me to do is to give the chassis a last cleaning on the inside and what we're going to do next is uh, clean all the uh, exterior parts uh, of the radio you know the buttons the panels um, you name it we're going to rewire the volume control wheel and the tuning control wheel and uh, yeah and then we're going to put it all back together again and um, and hopefully I can give you a little demonstration of the Biomaster uh, restored uh, to let's say original working condition it's been a few weeks since I started work on the Biomaster 901 restoration um, and since all the electronics are repaired uh, and cleaned by the way I thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to take stock of all the parts that I have uh, which uh, are part of the Biomaster's um, cabinet and uh, here you see all the parts so the bottom plate the top plate the restored top plate the restored side, pa side panels um, and all the little parts you know like the feet of the tuner uh, the knobs the screws um, here are some more knobs of the Biomaster and then here are all the bars that are mounted on the front of the Biomaster and of course not to forget the, the little plastic uh, black plastic uh, back plates of the Biomaster's uh, cabinet. Alright, so there you go. Now everything has uh, has been cleaned uh, with uh, the plastic parts mostly with some degreaser and just some soapy water and a soft sponge. Um, the wooden parts have been lightly sanded and then uh, have been given a uh, satin uh, varnish cover or layer as well as the side panels although the side panels are a full restoration this is not veneer uh, as the original panels would have been this is actually stained balsa wood which has been given a uh, semi-gloss uh, varnish layer all right so um, yeah <coughs> um, all
all the parts that are important to put back uh, together the Biomaster are here but I have one big problem which is that um, a lot of parts of the Biomaster are made from aluminium and aluminium is a notoriously difficult product to clean properly um, so I will have to do a bit of work and research on the aluminium parts uh, to see how I can clean them with minimal damage all right also there is uh, there are some peculiarities about the Biomaster that I still haven't solved yet I mean in the sense of how I'm going to um, yeah repair it if you want or or at the very least uh, well, replace it you know like this special grip tip uh, tape they used at the piano factory which suspiciously looks a lot like I would say um, you know plaster tape you know, when you cut yourself the tape you wrap around the cut well that's the kind of tape this gives me the impression to be and I don't have this kind of tape so really and, and they used it on a lot of different parts as you can tell so I'm kind of stumped right now as to how I'm going to replace that tape that's really that's a tough one all right um, <clears throat> so yeah the aluminium cleaning it and shining it up uh, that will be a hard one uh, without destroying the print on it obviously uh, and then obviously the last step will be putting it all together and uh, you can tell there are a number quite a large number of parts that need to be put together again it must have looked when it was brand new 
And here you see the other two buttons as they are now. Right? Now, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but if you, if you look at this one in a particular light, you can sort of see a dimple into the aluminum surface. And that dimple was obviously filled with some sort of red paint. So, what I'm going to do is with some regular tape, I'm going to mask off, all right, with some regular insulation tape. Uh, I'm going to mask off the area in the center. And once that is done, I'll give it a layer of a, a special kind of lacquer. You'll see what I mean. Beautifully glossy red, isn't it? So, all I need to do now is mask the other one, this one, and do the same thing all over again, and then let the nail polish cure in the meantime. Here's the result. It's not perfect, not by any means, but uh, compared to what it was, it's certainly an improvement. So all I need to do is clean the button up a little uh, and uh, maybe retouch uh, here or there a little bit with a very sharp little knife, you know, remove excess of lacquer here or there, clean the button and that's it. So I would say, okay, the result is acceptable. All right, the metal parts are screwed back to their holder, their plastic holder, and um, as you can see, it only takes two screws, all right. And um, it fits snugly into the plastic holder. Now, uh, a little bit of warning here. If you're going to screw in these screws, um, don't put insane tension on these screws, okay? Just do it until you feel that it's snug uh, and solidly turned in, but not rock hard, okay? Uh, otherwise you will either destroy the treading of the screw uh, or you'll split the plastic. Alright, so there you go. Uh, three buttons ready to be mounted back. Um, volume balance tone. So what I need to do next is mount back these buttons or reassemble them rather. Alright, there you go. 
I mounted the slider back onto the aluminum button. And as you can see it uses exactly the same kind of screws we used on the volume and the tone button. So again, do not tighten these screws too hard. Just until it's snug. Okay, or you'll split the plastic hold or uh, destroy the screws. And I'm talking about that type of screw. Alright, and there are two per button. Right, so uh, the... Oh, and by the way, the these buttons are not for volume, tone and balance, but for bass, treble and balance. The volume button is this one. Alright, so now let's move on to the tuning button and that's only slightly more complicated. So this is the tuning button and you can see there's a tiny little spring holding down the axle of the fine tuning button. Alright. So again, I sprayed uh, all the metal parts, including the little spring, with some WD-40. Uh, WD-40 is excellent uh, to repel rust, okay, or to slow down rusting or oxidation. So all I need to do now is give the buttons a final cleaning, and they'll be ready to be mounted back. Next, we're going to mount back the uh, FM stereo indicator and tuning indicator lenses. And you see them lying there in the same order. So the FM stereo is the left one, which is one complete block. The uh, tuning indicator, on the other hand, is like two separate little blocks. You see. I'll give you a close-up. So, in fact, it's like two little blocks of transparent plastic, yeah, which are fitted in a, a cone-like piece. And uh, this piece has uh, two holes, so one on either side, into which the tuning lights fit, and they slide into these little transparent blocks here which function more or less like a prism uh, to reflect the light towards the front. And uh, you need to slide them in uh, equally at equal distance into, the, into this piece, as it were, uh, to make them fit perfectly, okay? Uh, because obviously you want to aim for the little holes into which the the light bulbs eventually will fit. Now these uh, funnel like shaped parts uh, clip into the back uh, of the bezel of the tuner. So if you turn it over you see down there first you need to put in one of the colored plastic bars there and then you need to clip each of the corresponding funnel-like contraptions you see there uh, to this side of the bezel. Now, uh, as to which color is what, um, I you, you can choose. I mean, choose whatever color pleases you. But I think I will go for red as the FM stereo indicator and I will go with green for the tuning indicator. I don't know, somehow it seems more appropriate. I mean, uh, all the tuners that I have repaired until now used red as the stereo indicator, so it would seem to me 
to be logical to do it exactly that same way. Now, um, you'll see that uh, the slot for the plastic strip is, is very narrow. In fact, way much more narrow than the strip itself. And in fact, the front of the, of the colored plastic strip is not this, but that. Alright? And it's in fact, it's this little strip that you see on top of, of the plastic indicator which needs to fit into this slot here. So you need to push it from the back into the slot like that. There you go. And that's the funnel for with the prisms for the tuning indicator. Alright. So and should you ever want to um, uh, take out these prisms to clean them or maybe who knows to repair them that the trick is really is to to rock them like that okay so you you pull on one side and then gently and it will release eventually okay and then you simply lift it out and that's it we're going to attach the lower part of the Biomaster's bezel, all right, and that's the, the lowest, the lower strip, which is placed somewhere around here, all right, just underneath the row of switches on the front of the Biomaster. Now, to attach that to the frame of the Biomaster, you need special wedges and those wedges look like this uh, let's see in profile they look a little rounded at one end and flat at the other all right and they do have a little hole going through them now this is important so the way you attach uh, the bezel part of the bezel to the frame is you insert the large wedge like this and you do that at each end all right so you you see there is a cutout in the bezels uh, metal and the cutout matches precisely the profile of the large wedge all right, and this wedge also has a little hole in its center. Okay, so now, so you insert both large wedges. What you need to do now is to lift it up like this, and then in the frame there are matching holes, and you you insert one wedge here and one wedge there there you go now there is a, a special way of attaching this bezel to the so as I said the large wedges have a little hole in their center okay and that's how you will eventually attach it to the frame of the tuner by the use of this little pin here so which in effect is is a wedge itself and it has a roughly speaking a T shape let's see if I can give you a little bit more light so there all right so it has a a little T shape like form and it's relatively wide let's say and notice at its tip it has a beveled end you see like the end the, the very tip 
was beveled down a bit. So, in effect, what you'll need to do, or what you would need to do, is to insert this little wedge into the hole in the larger wedge, like, it's difficult to do with one hand, but like this, all right? And then you would need to push this little end all the way in. And normally, if you look at the part here, you can just about see the wedge right here in this opening. Right here. Okay? So you need to insert the wedge right behind the metal of, of the frame and push it all the way in to wedge the larger wedge solidly against the metal, like that. Now, I'm missing two wedges. Uh, apparently these, uh, well two of these were lost by whomever opened up the radio before me. And uh, these are really rather specific wedges, um, and and they are not so easily uh, to not so easy to get. So I got to thinking a little bit, and I think I found a valid alternative. I have a whole bunch of these nylon screws, um, M3 screws. Let me show you an original one. There. Alright, so I have a whole bunch of these M3 uh, nylon screws. They happen to be black, but, but you can get them in white and, and probably in other colors as well. Alright, so what I did was with a little file, I filed off both sides of the screw until it really becomes you could say a flat screw more or less and it I filed it down such that it has about the same width as the original wedge all right so if you if you look at them side by side you would see that they have about the same width. It doesn't need to be exactly the same width. A little bit wider doesn't hurt. Yeah, because then when you push it into the larger wedge, um, it will stay put, meaning it won't shake loose. All right. So, um, I am going to use the original wedges, uh, obviously, but I'm going to use them for the, uh, the bigger bezel, not for the, the small one uh, at the bottom. Alright, there is the result. Now, I had to use my flush cutters and cut a sliver off the head of the screw to make it fit inside that square little hole you see here. And using some pliers I managed to squeeze it tightly into the larger wedge. And now it's holding pretty well. There's a tiny little bit of play but not much. It's really solidly anchored. Now, once I anchor the other point of the bezel, this will not move again. Before I can start with my favorite job, quote unquote, of retreading the volume knob mechanism and the dial mechanism, I need to uh, remount the knobs to the tuner uh, for a very simple reason that um, the 
center bezel um, serves as the uh, uh, the holder let's say of pulleys which are necessary on the one hand for the volume button and on the other hand for the whole dial mechanism you can in fact see one of the pulleys for the dial mechanism right here and then one of the pulleys for the volume mechanism right here so right here somewhere in the center will be a double pulley one for the volume one for the for the dial mechanism mounting back the buttons uh, the on off buttons that is is uh, really not that difficult um, you just need to slide it in into the holder you see so right there like that and then you firmly push on the little aluminum plate like that see there you go all right now to mount back uh, the slider buttons uh, for balance uh, high tone low tone or treble bass you need to slide these buttons uh, onto a rail and the rail has been cut out of the uh, lower bezel you slide on the button on that rail down there alright so you slide them gently but firmly over that back rail and then you set the potentiometers somewhere in the middle and you set the slider buttons uh, right in front of them that way when you slide back the bezel into its position like that the slider buttons will automatically fit over the potentiometers all right there you go all right so I mounted back the slider buttons onto the center bezel this is the volume slider this will be eventually the tuning knob or the tuning slider all right um, yeah and I mounted it back on the middle uh, bezel and uh, it, it looks nice it really looks nice now there are a few details that I want to show you before I get on with it so I you'll remember that at the bottom and at the top of uh, this bezel there used to be some dirty tape which I removed eventually and uh, I mounted instead or I stuck instead uh, this copper tape to the bezel um, because you see the function of that tape that, that I removed was to make the buttons underneath and at the top where I also placed some of that copper tape to glide uh, easier um, over the bottom and the, the top of the uh, aluminum bar you see in my hand uh, you might say yes but why did you use copper tape and not say plastic tape well you see the function of the tape originally was to make the sliding of the buttons a bit smoother 
Now, copper is a soft uh, metal and it, it glides pretty well, uh, especially if you put a very little layer, a very thin layer of, so it, it glides exceptionally well if you put a thin layer of very fine oil on it. Uh, and I'm thinking about uh, silicone oil. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do. And uh, the copper tape will uh, allow the buttons to slide easier over the aluminum bar. So I want to show you how the buttons are mounted. So this is the tuning button. All right. And as you can tell, I mounted uh, the little spring at the back. All right. And this is how they are mounted onto the bar. I think you can just about see it. All right. So, yeah, I, I did the same thing, obviously, for the volume button. Alright, there you go. Okay, so what you also need to mount back before you uh, mount the bar back, uh, because it needs to be screwed down at both ends, as you can tell. Yeah, there are two screw holes here, and there are two screw holes there. You'll notice right next here, right next to this mono button, a little black tab there. So let me show you the tab. There you go. So it's important to mount this little tab, okay? Because that supports the central bar right in the middle so that it wouldn't bend in. Yeah, so mounting this little tab here, there's a tiny little hole underneath, yeah, is very important. You'll notice the little pulley uh, stand that I built into its designated spot. In fact, there are two pulleys, one on top of the other. Uh, one is for the volume button, the other is for the tuning button. Alright, the volume button is retreaded. Okay, and uh, there you go, a little detail of the treading that I did. And you can tell the, oh, and by the way, I, I'm using nylon wire, okay. Uh, this nylon wire, this particular one, is rated for 14 pounds or 7 kilograms of pulling force. And you can see how I clamped the nylon wire over the slider buttons, a little clamps, let's say, or tips. Alright, so you, s you start from the bottom, you go between the two little tabs, you go over, then you go back between them, and then under the furthest tab. And that's it. Um, and yeah, there's a, a detail of the wiring. Alright. Um, all I can tell you is, it's going to take you a while to get it to work. Um, so you need a lot of patience. I mean, retreading this particular uh, volume knob system took me about 45 minutes. I kid you not, this retreading specifically of the tuning mechanism. Alright, so 
this L-shaped pathway of the treading took me the better part of three hours to get it absolutely right. Um, if you're going to retread uh, a Biomaster 901, and I mean specifically the tuning part, well, you better arm yourself with a lot of patience uh, and coffee and fortitude because it is complicated and and it takes a lot of fine adjustments and all that uh, specifically of the position of the tread itself anyway so here it is uh, retreaded and uh, adjusted and it works and uh, I used the same kind of uh, nylon wire uh, that I used for the volume mechanism. Okay, so um, which is uh, uh, nylon wire rated for seven kilograms or fourteen pounds, fourteen pounds of pulling force. Anyway, so. Um, the uh, volume works. Uh, hang on. All right. So the volume works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan from the highest frequency, so 104 megahertz, all the way down to 88 uh, without stopping. So I'm going to slide the tuning uh, button from right to left and scan the sound uh, without lingering too long on one particular radio station because as you know uh, I could get a copyright strike. There you go. All right, I'm going to scan uh, the uh, FM band slowly, and I'm going to show you how the indicators work. So this is the stereo indicator. This is the tuning indicator. All right. So I'm just going to to show you how they react as I scan the band. All right, here we go. Scanning right to left from highest to lowest frequency. You can see the tuning indicator uh, alternating between the left half and the right half. And the goal is to have the tuning indicator uh, light up uh, precisely on as much on both halves. Okay. Alright, the underside is mounted. Now we need to mount the two back panels, uh, one around the antenna and input jacks, 
and one for around the speaker jacks and the headphone jack input. Uh, and placing uh, or attaching all of these panels is really very simple. All you need to do is uh, you can tell the upper panel has like two tabs at its ends. So, and these slide in there. Alright, so let's do just that. There you go. Well, here it is. The Biomaster 901 from Bang & Olufsen. Repaired, cleaned and reassembled. It's a really cool looking tuner amplifier and um, yeah it's a real pleasure to behold. I do wish though that Bang & Olufsen had built them had built them a little bit more robust I would say but the design is really cool. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching these series and I'll gladly see you back for another episode on my channel. Thanks for watching.